I'll take a moment to once again thank Chairman Carper and Ranking Member Capito and the Subcommittee Ranking Member Lummis for making today's hearing possible. Appreciate the efforts of uh, our collective staff as well. I uh, especially want to thank our witnesses for your thoughtful testimony and uh, your ongoing efforts to improve the state of tribal water in this country. As I mentioned earlier, today's hearing is about more than just the transformational investments we're making in water infrastructure. It's about fulfilling our federal trust responsibilities to tribes that deserve a guarantee from the federal government to safe, healthy, and prosperous life. Those responsibilities don't end after the enactment of one historic infrastructure bill, and they're not fulfilled by periodic check-ins just to say we've done our job. This is a constant and growing nation-to-nation -nation relationship that goes both ways. And yes, we have a moral responsibility to continue to serve Native American tribes who were forcibly displaced from their homelands. And I want to make clear for folks back home, the problems discussed today, this isn't a matter of technical infrastructure jargon or policy speak. This is about making sure that a parent in Indian country can turn on the tap and not fear they'll get their child sick by giving them a glass of water. So I'm making sure a family on a reservation doesn't have to conserve every last drop of water to bathe themselves because they're not sure when the next shipment of water will come in. It's about making sure an entire community doesn't have to worry about one lightning strike or one burst pipe or extreme weather, what that could mean to the loss of all clean water. And of course, for countless Native Americans, it's about knowing that the U.S. government values you and your family's health enough to invest in the resources that will keep you safe. So I take this responsibility seriously. And clearly, with multiple hearings this week and next, the U.S. Senate is demonstrating that we all take this issue seriously. But now it's time to move beyond the initial excitement over an influx of funding to tribal communities to do the bipartisan infrastructure law and follow it up to make sure it's accessible and implemented thoughtfully. Because we've got to make sure that we're making long-term sustained investments in water systems throughout the country. Uh, I once again thank our witnesses today for helping us to better understand some of the potential next steps we can take to bolster tribal communities' water systems. As Mr. Norton pointed out, that could include directing the EPA and the Indian Health Service to evaluate the specific needs of all tribal public water systems to determine what it would take to fund a federal operations and maintenance program. Or as Mr. Benham pointed out, that could include improved workforce development so that tribes have access to water and wastewater system operators that can provide safe drinking water and adequate sanitation services. And as I called for in the first subcommittee hearing, we need to fund a permanent water rate assistance program akin to LIHEAP for energy assistance to ensure that Native American households can afford water bills. And we need a whole of government approach to fully funding federal programs related to tribal drinking wastewater, including the programs in the bipartisan infrastructure law that we authorized but didn't fund. So I look forward to advancing legislation in the months ahead that lives up to our trust responsibility to provide clean water throughout Indian country. And uh, I want to thank you all again for being here. Uh, look forward to the follow-up. And with that, this hearing is adjourned.